welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you found my channel, maybe consider subscribing. Today we're going to further discuss head porting and we're using this cylinder head here as an example like I did in my last video. Um, if you're not up to speed on say the tools that you'll need to complete this task, um, maybe go back and watch the first video as this is the second one. So we've got some of the work done. On the exhaust side here, the uh, valve guide boss has been shaved down and I've begun to recontour the port, how I like to see them or how I like to do them, as well as the intake side. If this is your first time porting ahead, uh, please do not be discouraged if you, you know, get in there with your burr and you start seeing, you know, some inconsistent patterns. You can always fix that in the blending stage. It's probably not going to come out as smooth and as contoured as this one is. And you can see even mine has some imperfections that'll get fixed while blending. You know, in particular down here you know it's nothing major it's just a couple things that aren't perfectly smooth and you're not necessarily aiming for perfectly smooth at this point you just want to resize the ports how you see fit uh, in particular you want to aim for gasket matching so this would be your intake side of the cylinder head you would like this to be the same diameter at the least as the intake that's being bolted to it same with the exhaust side here so what I like to do for the exhaust side is I like to take an exhaust gasket or a exhaust crush gasket in this case that's already been crushed and I like to insert it here onto the exhaust side that way I can get an idea of how large the exhaust port needs to be to match up with the exhaust as best as possible. So as you can see, this one is opened up to just about where I want it to be. It matches up with the gasket and that'll make for optimal airflow referred to as gasket matching. Once we're done porting this head, I will then alter the deck height or alter the distance between the cylinder head's seating surface to the top of the piston. So ideally at this point, you'll start to see materials being removed, everything's smoothing out, there's no serious you know dips or anything you haven't taken excessive material from any one particular spot you're just trying to evenly remove material um, a few ways to go about this if you're new to porting a cylinder head or you know removing material in general with you know a carbide burr whenever you flip on a quarter inch die grinder for example this one says 25,000 revolutions per minute you know that's that's quite a bit you might want to put a inline potentiometer which would basically plug into your wall outlet run out and then your die grinder actually plugs into that <clears throat> allowing you to control the speed of your die grinder uh, to this point most of the work has been done with a cone-shaped double cut burr, as I would refer to it. And again, once you're done, you feel that you've removed all the material you would like to remove. The ports are adequately sized. You have shaved down your valve guide boss, which is that protrusion right here. Some cylinder heads have a larger one than others, so you'll have to remove more material. 
Some have a, you know, a overall better casting. There's less flaws. There's not as much material to initially remove to then begin sizing the port how you see fit. <clears throat> Once you're done, you can use sanding drums. That's where you'll start to get a more, you know, a more blended natural finish. Once you're finished, you want it to appear as if you didn't do any of this work. You don't want any major inconsistencies to cause, you know, further air turbulence or, you know, any issues. You just want a smooth way for the air to flow in, and then you want a smooth port for the air to flow out. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth about actually polishing the head. You know, it used to be referred to as a port and polish. Now it's referred to as porting. You can polish it. You cannot polish it. You know, you, you can get in there and polish everything up to a real nice high polish finish. If you want to, that's kind of just up to the end user. In this case here, the intakes opened just about as far as I needed to. I'm gonna check it with a micrometer here to make sure it's adequately sized, but it's right about where I need it to be. So I can begin to start blending, which will be in the next video here. You know, I'll come back, I'll show you everything smoothed out. You know, get a lot of the, a lot of the inconsistencies you'll see on camera. Sorry, losing focus here. And just get everything nice and smoothed up. Once we're done, we'll lap the valves. That way, you know they're sealing correctly. Uh, in some instances, the valves were never lapped to begin with. There was an issue brought to my attention by a friend of mine not long ago about Kawasaki's in the early to mid 2000s where they just were not lapping valves. Uh, he has a Vulcan 750. He pulled it apart to do some engine repairs and found that his valves were never lapped. That goes to some of the Ninja 250s, 600s, 636s, 750s, so on and so on. So you might not have ever had the valves lapped to begin with. And I have a video covering valve lapping, but I'm gonna go into a little more detail. That way you can get your valves lapped correctly. And moving right along here, like I said, we're gonna finish this head up and then we are going to alter the deck height or the distance between the valve when it's open and the piston whenever it's up top dead center, however you'd like to refer to it. <clears throat> I like to decrease the amount of material here. That way we're closing the gap, decreasing the volume in between, and essentially increasing the compression ratio, <clears throat> which in turn increases your performance, which is why we're doing this. That's what we're after. We want more performance. We want more power, better throttle response, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully this is helping. Like I said, if you've missed any of this, uh, the first video explains you know, some of the tools that you'll need to take out the valves, the valve springs, reinstall them correctly without a spring flying at you and potentially hurting you. While you're doing this, please wear safety glasses. Here's an idea of some of the material, and that's a very minimal amount just from the last round of porting that I was doing. It's very fine. It's gonna go everywhere. It's gonna get all over you. It's gonna get all over your clothes, your hands. Hopefully not in your eye. Never feels good to have metal extracted from your eye. <clears throat> Maybe I've done that in the past and that's why I wear safety glasses. So, like I said, moving right along. We're gonna go ahead and get this head finished up for the customer. That way I can get it shipped back to him and he can enjoy the added performance that comes along with the cam he's going to run, uh, the larger bore, everything else that he's doing. It's all going to work together beautifully, and this bike's going to make a lot more power. So stay tuned. 
If you have any questions, any way I can help, you need a link for the carbide burrs that I bought, or you know any recommendations on what quarter inch die grinder or a Dremel to buy, that way you can get started. Please don't hesitate to ask if I've left something out in this video that you were hoping I would mention. Again, just leave me a comment. I respond to all of my comments within you know a couple hours or so, as long as I'm available. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button as it helps my channel grow. Have a great day.